Well, good morning and welcome back to another indoor ramble. Changed my office view this morning, so I'm looking out onto the sea and also some fantastic views of swallows which have returned from Africa. I just wanted to talk a little bit this morning about printing. That would have been a, a starling that just literally was up against the window. I am so easily distracted. As I said, I wanted to talk a little bit about printing. I got, I guess, lured in to the whole printing thing and specifically printing at home. I, I guess sort of reading romanticized tweets and watching, you know, YouTube clips of other photographers, both, you know, well-known such as Charlie Waite and Joe Cornish, right through to just, you know, person on the, you know, general bloke on the street doing some uh, printing at home and talking about how wonderful it was to hold a print in their hands. And I thought, I want a little bit of that. I convinced myself that the journey of photography wouldn't be complete until I myself was printing at home. Printing was for me. The truth be told, it's been an extremely painful and expensive journey. And a journey that right now has me questioning whether or not printing at home, printing your own images, is actually all it's cracked up to be. A number of years ago, probably 15 years ago, I had printed a number of my images using just online print labs. Uh, one of them, which is probably not going to show too well with the reflections, but I'll do a little top down of that. I dabbled with printing back in the day, but never once considered printing my own images. Three or four years ago, um, I came across a, I had tested a bunch of um, online print resources, and the closest I got to something that uh, was pleasing was DS Color Labs. And I used them for quite a bit of time, uh, sort of, I, I ran a, a sort of a competition or a, a, every month uh, a giveaway and I would use DS Color Labs to print out the images that I was giving away and I have to say I was quite quite pleased with them um, but of course lots of people kept saying you know do you trust the colors with online print labs and you should be printing at home print at home print at home and so I continued to sort of question well maybe I should get a printer because I do enjoy you know holding you know the the final print but again, it was quite an expensive investment, not least the printer, but also the ongoing print and paper costs. I then came across a company called L-Type. And they were doing a special show offer at the Bird Fair. And this was a couple of years ago. Um, and I thought, well, a couple of free prints. Let's send off some images to those guys. And that's exactly what I did. And I have to say, I was absolutely blown away with the quality. Again, won't be too evident here, and I'll do a little bit of a top-down view. Um, but the quality of the print was absolutely phenomenal. A little flying puffin shot over, over Skookum. And so I was, once again, excited about potentially offering a higher grade of print to my clients while not having to take on the whole printing at home. A couple of weeks later, L-Type went out of business. I didn't really understand the, the background of that, but I was rather disappointed because here I had discovered um, a, what seemed to be a phenomenal uh, printing uh, firm only for it to go up in smoke. So up until this point, I hadn't offered any prints for sale via my website. But the simple matter, simple fact was, I couldn't guarantee the quality kind of end to end. Um, and while I was reasonably happy with the DS Color Labs prints, um, again, I didn't feel comfortable selling something that, you know, I didn't have full control over, especially the process needed to kind of get the, that print looking right on on this on the specific paper, um, I I think I probably would have done something with L type, 
They also seem to have quite a good workflow for being the intermediary between photographers and clients. But sadly, of course, they are no longer in business. So I made the decision about two and a half years ago to get myself a printer. Ended up with the Sure Color Epson Sure Color P600, which can print up to A3 Plus prints. And I was excited, stroke apprehensive about getting the printer home and running off the first couple of test prints. Now, those first couple of test prints, I printed on just generic Canon uh, photo quality glossy paper. And they were okay. I'm not sure I have any to hand, but they were okay. They, they just didn't leave me feeling like, wow, I'm holding kind of one of my prints. What like the L-type print, when I first picked it up, I was like, oh my goodness, this, this looks fantastic. So I started to investigate a little bit more. And of course, as I'm sure many watching uh, this channel uh, are familiar with them, I started to consider photo speed papers. And of course, along with that, color profiling. Uh, so I got myself a, a color profiler. Um, I got myself a couple of test packs with um, the photo speed paper. Um, got some profiles, uh, specific profiles printed out and went ahead and printed a couple of test prints again. And again, they were okay, nice. I don't think this is the printer's fault. I think this is me being a bit overdramatic. But the, the feeling, this is kind of a textured cotton etching uh, paper. This is platinum etching. Yeah, they, 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 were, they were okay. Again, the feeling that I had looking at the images on the screen versus the feeling I had holding the image in my hand, it still left me feeling quite hollow about the whole printing experience. So I carried on working with the guys at Photospeed and those guys are phenomenal by the way, really kind of got plenty of time for you, sent me plenty of test packs and really sort of held my hand. But I still just couldn't get an image that was coming out of the printer that I, I held in my hand and I went, Yep, I can really see this, the benefits of this whole end-to-end -end workflow. You know, there was the odd occasion where things were just too, too blue. Or in other cases, just, just too washed out. Um, it, it just, it just was becoming so, so frustrating. I got close on a few occasions and what was interesting was actually some of my ICM images actually started to to maybe get a little bit closer. Ignore the little nick out of the paper there, but this is probably one of the only images that I printed that I was getting much closer to to liking. So we we started to make some some progress. I kind of left things alone for a couple of weeks. I, I was getting through paper at a rate of knots. Um, I was getting through my fingernails at a rate of knots and I decided to leave things for a couple of weeks. So I, I came back and I thought, right, let's get back into this whole printing malarkey again. We can, we can crack this. And I made a test print of an image that I uh, really wanted to print big um, and frame it at, at home. It was from a trip to the Outer Hebrides. And I printed it and I, I thought, goodness me, I've either had too much or not enough coffee this morning because those colors look completely and utterly bonkers. So I did a, a head clean, I did a sort of an alignment, all the sort of normal stuff and I printed it again and it was looking, well, judge for yourself. So I thought, let's print another image. What's going on? Let's print another one. <clears throat> I mean, seriously, what's going on? And remember, I'm printing here with a calibrated monitor. I'm printing here with custom profiles for the specific paper and I'm getting colors like this. So I was back on the phone to photo speed and we basically went through the whole process over and over and over again. You know, remove printer, add printer, go through the process, we'll send you new profiles. And it, <clears throat> I mean, literally, I went through pages and pages of prints 
that just were... I mean... It wasn't even slightly off. It was literally, completely... In fact, that previous one that I was talking about that, that was showing up with a little tinge of blue... Well, we kind of got rid of the blue. So suffice to say, I was absolutely just ah. done and dusted with this whole printing malarkey. Now, what was quite interesting was when I was letting the printer manage the color rather than choosing a specific profile, things got a little closer to normal, even though it was looking to the naked eye better. Because I was leaving the printer to manage the color, it kind of, to me, was making a bit of a, you know, a waste of time of doing the whole profiling anyway. I might as well just send these images off to a, to a photo lab um, because I felt as though I was still removing one of the key steps that you do with home printing. So again, I thought, right, I'm just gonna leave this and, and, and walk away. Basically what we thought maybe had happened, it was some kind of software bug. I was using the latest but one version of, of Apple. I was um, uh, using the latest version of Lightroom Classic. And in fact, I tried to do test prints within various programs as, as well. And looking, at, looking around the sort of internet forums, there were little sporadic sort of mentions of this looking to happen to other people where it actually looked like it was double profiling, which is why we were getting nuclear pink blancmange seascapes. It seemed to be a software issue. And that was frustrating because I hadn't really changed anything. You know, software gets updated. You get little sort of updates from Adobe and from Mac and whoever. But all of a sudden, it had pretty much rendered my whole ability to print completely null and void. So I, I really, again, questioned the whole... What is the point in printing at home? It is just, you know, so painful, so expensive. And is even when I was printing images out that were okay, that's all they were, okay. So again, I left things alone for a little while. In fact, longer than a little while, we went away traveling. And um, I came back and over Christmas, I thought to myself, right, let's see whether we can crack this, this printing malarkey again. I, I, well, first of all, I hoped that there would be another couple of updates with the um, Apple OS and with Lightroom, and maybe the problem had all just magically disappeared. You know, turn it off and on again, typical IT speak. No such luck. If anything, it was looking far worse because I'd been away for a number of weeks. Well, actually, before I even got to this point, I again tried to print it with the printer manages the color, and even with the printer managing color, the colors looked completely diabolical. So I did a couple of uh, head test prints, uh, head cleaning prints, and I noticed that there were there's basically a lot of lines missing in various bits and pieces. Um, so obviously there was a bit of a clogging or something going on there. So again, I got back on the phone with PhotoSpeed. They have basically advised that yes, it looks like um, there's a secondary problem now. Uh, perhaps things have become clogged. And so what the guys did was, I'm actually using their ink flow system. Uh, which actually is fantastic from a cost perspective. But just a little thing that you need to be aware of is just how the printer reacts when you perhaps leave uh, ink or you let the um, cartridges get too low and the chip is reading because of course as you put in a new ink cartridge in normal circumstances, um, that will say, I'm full, everything's, everything's good. Whereas obviously because you're using the ink flow system and you're using the same chips, it can sometimes result in the printer saying there's no ink in there, even though there is. So basically, Tim sent me out a whole new bag of chips. He also sent me a link to a, an ink charge instruction. And basically what I think this is going to do, it's going to do a complete flush of the ink through the system and hopefully will unblock or do whatever it needs to do from a, a physical problem point of view. And then we can have a little bit of a play and see whether or not we can get around these color problems. I'm not convinced, and if this doesn't work, I may just sell my printer. Because I just, for me personally, I'm still to be convinced. I, I want to love home printing. I watch videos, I speak to people, I go to galleries and I see the prints. I would love to have prints that I printed out myself around the home. 
but I'm yet to be convinced. And this, I think, is potentially last chance saloon for home printing. But that's going to be a story for next time. Because right now, I've got myself all worked up again. I think I need a coffee. Actually, no, probably a chamomile tea. Printing, eh?